Speaking of bad things, though, I do want to move the subject on slightly. Refereeing in the Premier League, bruv. What are you, what are you saying? Talk to me. Because this weekend we saw a rightful red card of Casemiro. Followed you by... You think that was a red? I, I think it was... Listen, I think it was un, what I would call an unlucky red. I think by the letter of the law, he went in very forcefully. His, book, his foot went over the ball and he caught the man's shin. So I understand why it's a red. But I equally think a scissor tackle on uh, Garnacho that's ended up injuring him in, in for a month is also a foul because you have to take the player out to get the ball. I think it's horrendous that Nick Pope wasn't sent off against Wolves. Dan Burns tackle where he goes, again, wins the ball, but goes through the, the man afterwards. The one I don't on Jao Felix was mad. The one on Jao Felix. So again, the inconsistency of refereeing in the Premier League, Lee, like talk to me about it. I don't think that was a red card, though. You don't think? Like, I can see why it was given, that Casemiro one, but he won the ball. I, I see a game last season, I think. I think it was Brighton against somebody. And the guy kicked the ball. And as he's kicked the ball, it's like bouncing. On, and it, the ball bounces off the ground, goes up in the air, and he goes to kick it. And he's, after he's kicked the ball, the momentum of his foot has then clipped the guy who's gone in for the tackle as well when the ball's off the ground. Straight mm. red. Like, refereeing in England's dead. Apparently, it's the best league in the world. Yeah, it's got the worst referees. Uh, I, I don't understand why they they get away with with everything. Like, where's the accountability for the referees? There isn't there isn't any. Like, it, it makes no sense. Like, when you look at these other leagues, I, I watch a lot of La Liga. They don't take five minutes to come to a decision on VAR. It's literally, like one minute, one and a half minutes. Bang, job done. See you later. We move on, and then they add the time back on, which is another thing they don't do in England. Yeah, that Casemiro red card, I think they added one minute um, stoppage time in the first half. It took about four minutes. So I was there only one minute stoppage time. Makes yeah. no sense. Makes no sense whatsoever. And then the problem you have is the referees look straight at it. He was right next to it and he's deemed it a yellow card. So then he gets the geezer in his ear, who ironically was the referee who never gave the, the red or gave a free kick on Jao Felix. And it was him in VAR. Right? But he's gone running over after Anthony Taylor's already seen it, already yellowed him right in front of it. He's looked at it on the screen and gone, oh, actually, yeah, it's a red. Well, it ain't a red, though, is it, mate? Because you've already given a yellow and you're looking right at it. Mm. Yeah, so what has made you change your mind on that? And why is it when they run over to that little TV screen, they always change the original decision? I think it's only once. I think Andre Mariner has only once stuck with a decision. I think every other referee that runs over there has changed, changed their first decision. Which makes no sense either. Well, well, I think, Lee, that's a great point. When you said, what made you change your mind? That's why we need to hear what's being said. Because yeah. if Andre Mariner or whoever it is refereeing says, I, in his ear, did you see him make contact with the player's shin with his studs? If the referee says, no, I, don't think, I didn't think he did, then you can understand where the clear and obvious error is because it, there's something that's happened that the referee didn't see. But we would get clarity. And a few people are saying, like, how is it an unlucky red? I just want to address this for a minute. When I say unlucky red, Casemiro didn't go in with his studs showing, miss the ball and smash the guy's shin. He won the ball, and then the his foot bouncing off the ball and rolling over it took him into the player. It was unlucky from that point of view. It wasn't a missed time tackle. It, you know, well, there was no... Yeah, it was a perfectly timed tackle because he yeah, won yeah. the ball. Yeah, yeah. It was just, you know, it was a little bit unfortunate. You know, if the, you know, it just, he it, it, it wasn't late is what I'm saying in terms of that tackle. But then I understand why it's a red. But then, you, as I say, you look at the other situations. Why are you not looking at the monitor and the slow mo for the handball? Why are you not looking at the monitor and oh, the slow mo? That was handball as well. Oh, it, the, ha <laughs> the handball was the handball was crazy the way he fell over. And again, and the referee was looking straight at that. He was in a perfect it's position. Un unbelievable. And then you've got the, the Rashford one, which the more again, a lot of people are looking at the reverse angle in normal motion. It looks like Rashford tripped him. Some people have said he did it on purpose to himself. But you can clearly see from the the opposite angle, the goalkeeper's knee, who was late, by the way, unlike Casemiro, who deflected into the player, he was late, clips Rashford's foot, which makes it a foul. And I to saw be fair to the goalkeeper, he did pull out. Yeah, yeah, he, he pulled out, but still caught him. And I, I still think that's a, you know, the, the other day, Bruno went through on uh, Bravo, in Bruno on Bravo in goal. Fouled him and rightfully got a yellow card, but you could see he pulled out, no, sh no studs showing, but still caught him. Still a foul, like he still caught him. But I heard a professional pundit say, defending the ref, saying, well, how's a referee meant to see that when you had to see it with slow-mo? I thought, well, that's exactly what VAR is for. Slow mm. motions and reverse angles. And 
if, if the slow-mo shows contact that your naked eye can't see, for me, that is the definition of a clear and obvious mistake. Now, I don't think this is a, a conspiracy, by the way, against Man United. That wasn't a pen. Do you think it was a pen? See, for me, I, I think it's a foul. I, 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 but I'm consistent with this. I look at it from the point of view, the penalty Arsenal got against Liverpool, where there was minimal contact on Gabriel Jesus's leg, but he got kicked. I'm like, he still kicked him. And that is, for me, that type of, people say it's a contact sport. Yes, that's for shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder barging. Like, shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder, two men crash into each other hard and one comes off worse than the other. It isn't a foul. A little, you know, a little bit of um, sort of wrestling at corners where both sets of players are pulling on each other, that's a contact sport. Where it isn't a contact sport is if you go past someone and they clip your foot and you trip over and fall. Because that, otherwise, by that logic, that means everyone can trip anybody at any moment, as long as it's only a minimal trip and not a big trip. So I, again, I, I want that defined. For me, it's a foul. And I, I just think that, the, I don't think there's a conspiracy against Man United. There is just awful, awful refereeing in this league at the moment. And barring it being incompetence, I'm trying to think of a logical thing. Um, I'm trying to think of a logical thing that makes it acceptable. And the only thing that makes sense is that these referees do it on purpose to create dra drama. Like, I actually don't believe they're this incompetent. I also don't think they're corrupt which means they're doing this for shits and giggles and for entertainment purposes, because it doesn't, outside of that... It, 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 it doesn't make sense. It. Terry, it's that crazy. Tottenham game, right, which Richarlison scored, there was no way that was offside. Did you see that? There, there was no way in a million years he's offside. How did they get that line to make it look like he was offside? Because he weren't offside. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm kind of... The offsides, look, they, they say that they're using a, like, sort of trigonometry. I think trigonometry is what you use. And because of the perspective of the where, where the camera is to the, the way the lines look, they can sometimes look onside when they're off and offside when they're on. Um, and I understand that pers perspective is a real thing. There was a lines, you know, the goal you scored the other week where Saka won the ball and Martinelli runs through and scores, but it looked like Martinelli was offside. I want to say you were playing. Who were you playing? It wasn't let, uh, Everton when you're at home and it was given as offside and yes. overruled. I saw some when the line was drawn, somebody was saying, well, the line isn't parallel with the, with the edge of the box. If you keep following the lines forward, they would end up touching. And again, that's perspective. So I understand the offsides. For me, do, I look do, at yeah, the... Do, do you know what makes it mad, right? You know, they have these cameras that are swinging, yeah, and they come flying down. They're on a string and all of that, and they come fly, flying down and pan in and get you the best shots of the players. Why don't they just do VAR with that? Why don't they have a camera up in the air, yeah, that can... Boom! It's in the whole pitch. Well, they, they should. They should. There should be the technology. Well, they they have it in the Champions League now, where they they get almost instant decisions, and then they show you the computer generated image. Mm. And and I quite like that. Um, but that's what I'm saying example. about other leagues. Other no, leagues, no, I, I, I don't take I, I, forever I, to get I, a decision. I, I totally agree. But that's why I feel like I don't think we're. I don't. I don't think they're as bad as it as decisions are making out. I believe it's done on purpose, not to not corruption wise against any one particular team. Because as you said off air. City are currently being charged by the Premier League. Arsenal fans think there's a conspiracy. United fans think there's a conspiracy against them. Liverpool fans think Man United pay referees, as an example. So who exactly are they trying to make win the league? I don't know. I just sometimes think... Are they, just, are they? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. They're all Spurs <laughs> fans in disguise. But yeah, it, it's crazy to me. Um, someone here says, uh, uh, Terry, you're saying our refs are inconsistent, but if they made a, a mistake earlier in the season, shouldn't it be correct? Could correct it now? Correcting refereeing throughout the season is not inconsistent. But what are they correcting? I'm talking about, in the space of a whole weekend, three to four red card tackles being made, but only one being given. I'm talking about... And Liverpool the one that was given, he won the ball. I don't see that. Somebody put it yeah, in your chat I earlier saying that the law, you don't know the laws of the game because you can still be done even if you win the ball. Right? I, yeah, that's and cool. And that's at the same fine. time, he's, he weren't two foot off the floor. Yeah, you said, and then we've agreed, he was perfectly timed because he won the ball. What's he supposed to do? As soon as he wins the ball, press pause and just freeze. So, uh, e like, equally. It's ridiculous. And do you know what made it mad in that, Terry? Yeah, not one Southampton player was screaming for a red card. And they the, were all shocked. And, and two times that Casemiro has been sent off this season, both the players that he's been sent off for hurting or failing will come up to him, come up to him and giving him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, maybe which, they ask for his shirt. <laughs> maybe, 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 but to that point, there, even if you win the ball, it can still be a foul. Exactly why Bruno's and Garnacho's were also penalties because both times Peters wins the ball, but he takes the players out in doing so. So, and the second one on Garnacho was a scissor tackle, 
which is against the law of the game. The amount of people in your chat saying a reckless challenge. Sorry, let me just just finish this point. Also this season, the same scissor-style challenge done on Christian Eriksen only got a yellow card, but it took Eriksen out for the majority of the season. Now, I'm using Man United examples here, so of course rivals will say, cry more, it's Man United. But I don't think rivals understand. The more you banter rivals for getting these bad decisions rather than condemning the FA, the Premier League and the referees, all you were doing is guaranteeing the same very the same bad decisions against your team in your next game because they know they can get away with being inconsistent. So the point remains, if you can be sent off or it's a foul, if you win the ball first but hurt a player, why was Garnacho's for a scissor tackle where his standing leg was wrecked, ligament damage in the ankle? Why is that acceptable to go through a player and do that? But you'll see someone else do it, and maybe a player with a bad reputation, a Granite Jacker, uh, Casemiro is now getting a bad reputation. They will be penalized for doing the exact same things. So, my friend, it's not about correcting decisions. Equally, on Saturday, Liverpool got a handball for a player. His arm was out by his side. But I, I kid you not, jump in the air to head of a ball and then turn midair and see if your arms go out to the side. They always do. It's a natural position. And it was rightfully given. 24 hours later, Man United get a handball that should have been given, but it, but it, but it was not. That's when well, we people are talking again. about... The, we had three in the game against Bournemouth. Yeah, that's when we're They're talking exactly about... The same. Yeah, exactly. That's when people were talking about the inconsistencies. Not They've made some mistakes week one, and then from week two onwards, they're corrected. Everybody wants that. But for me, it's where there are things that should be red cards are not given, and then one in five, they give it. That's where fans become angry, whether you think it's a red card um, or not. We have some super chats here I want to do. The first one says, uh, Terry, what's... Uh, so I'll come back to that one a bit later because it's a little bit. If they're off topic, I'll come back to them because I like to keep things on what we're speaking about as opposed to jumping to and from different things. Uh, Man City must win the league, uh, can't lose number two. Eddie, we'll come back to that when we talk about the league title race later. I just don't want to go off subject. I know you guys like to super chat and I appreciate it, but I like to keep it to a degree on topic. Um, if we uh, if we can, but yeah, look, I just think that the standard of refereeing, um. Uh, as a saint, I don't think it was a red card. That's a, a, a Southampton fan. They're not thinking there that it go. was a red card. Um, yeah, it's it's one of them again. And I think it was a red card, or I understand why it was a red card. That isn't my gripe at all. It was the ref, the rest of these refereeing decisions. And someone did a, a thread today on decisions that have gone against United this year. Twice we've had free kicks that have been taken against us. One was um, what's his face Ward Prowse on Saturday, and the other was the goal that Villa scored against us where the, the wall was made to be almost 15 yards back rather than 10. And the play, and our, we had a player each time booked for complaining. But yet it was... And that's what I mean by referees not being reprimanded. You could, like, on a review, if you see a wall being pushed back 15 yards, like five yards is a long way in a wall when it comes to getting a free kick up and down. Like, and I'm not saying that they wouldn't have scored that free kick at um, Aston Villa, but I just want refereeing decisions to be better. And the worst decision of the weekend, by the way, wasn't even against United. It was Nick Pope staying on the pitch. Against Wolves. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I've seen, I've had Newcastle fans coming for me going, no, Terry, watch. It was the Wolves player that initiated contact and da-da-da-da-da. I'm like, no, I'm really sorry. I, I just don't see, I understand why Newcastle fans would want to defend it because it's their club and they want to protect their club. But my word, it, it was, and that's my point. You know, I've been calling out bad decisions all year because I've never seen refereeing this bad in the Premier League. Right from the, right from the off, the first bad decision of the season when, Romero was pulling on Kukurea's hair down to the ground and VAR didn't intervene. As soon as I saw that, I knew we were on for a bad, bad season. It's it's crazy. Uh, this super chat says, any challenge that looks like it can break a leg is red. So, but this is the thing though, my friend. Like, I disagree. But, but, but again, looking like it could break a leg, I get. But I guarantee you, you'll find more tackles like Carl Walker-Peters on Garnacho cause injury than what uh, Casemiro did. I guarantee you can find more. Listen, you'll find two or three broken legs in 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 the last thirty years of football. Casemiro's way, but there's far more players get injured through scissor tackles where you go through the man's standing leg. Far more injuries. Yeah, Casemiro did far more hundred mile an hour. Yeah, and and straight on his shin. Yeah, the the fact that he won the ball cushioned most of the most of the impact anyway. Yeah, so it was literally just a little touch. Yeah, the fact that the player weren't rolling around milking it for ten minutes. Like, and then the fact that he wasn't injured and looked surprised that he got him sent off. Mm. Uh, th- you can always tell, right? When, when a, you can tell by players' reactions, if they think it's handball, everyone, all straight, even if they're all in different parts of the pitch, 
Yeah, and they can see it straight away. Everyone's hands go up at the same time. Penalty. And then when you look back at the replays, you go, oh, that, that did it, his hand. Yeah, play, players will know if that's a red card tackle or not. They play the game every day. And the fact that no Southampton player called for a red card tells you it weren't a red card. Mm. Mate, I, I, 110, 110%. 110%. I, I get that completely. Um, this here says Casemiro was a clear red. The problem is is that uh, the same tackle happened in another game and the ref did not give a red card. Two things are red. Casemiro was red and refs need to be more consistent. And listen, again, whether you think it's a red or not, I just want consistency in the decision making because I want to review the football and not the inconsistencies of refs that keep changing these games uh, so dramatically. Thank you for that super chat, my friend. I really I appreciate it. Comment very quickly. It's a comment. Rules are the rules. It's been that way for a decade. Show studs you're endangering a fellow player. Yeah. <laughs> like it's to defer, defer those types of um, tackles. Yeah. At the end of the day, then wear shin pads for a reason, mate. <laughs> yeah, he didn't exactly go in 100 mile an hour, bang, clattered straight through and missed the ball, snapping him with intent or anything like that. He won the ball. Mm. He won like, the ball. 